so the uh, um, what what we use in the in the hot libraries for the uh, sigma types, uh, we use the record types so that again we have eta conversion here. Uh, then we redefine the lowest universe in uh, of Koch, which is called set, to be type zero. Then if we look at the definition of the empty type, uh, this is just given by uh, the uh, I hear my uh even larger my computer is getting very warm so i'm hoping that it's not crashing because then things will be even more exciting uh so the the empty type has no constructors uh the uh if we look at the unit type then we can see it has precisely one constructor and the uh the natural numbers you have two constructors it's uh, it has the uh, the zero constructor and the successor constructor uh, then we can look at the uh, booleans from the So here's the def inductive definition, and again, uh, I want this to be bigger, something like so. Uh, so we have uh, the inductive booleans as true and false as the two constructors, and again, we have the boilerplate here. Then finally, we define the. Uh, There's a lot of discussion going on, but I cannot follow it. Uh, then we define the uh, paths. So this is a, a, a copy of the, uh, the, the identity type from uh, Koch, the act type. Um, but this is a, a commutative collection of inductive types. So one for each universe. So that's given by the cumulative keyword here. I think if I move this a bit. Um, and so we cannot use Cox it type because it ends up in prop. And this is the reason why we need to throw out the whole uh, Cox standard library. So this is actually quite a bit of work. Um, so uh, the, we don't use the, the lowest universe from Cox, which is called prop, because this would break, uh, would break hot. And so if you look at the, um, uh, if you look at the uh, the Coq project file that we uh, that we used, then you see that Coq is actually called with the indices matter flag. So this means that we actually have the identity type. It looks at the universe level of its arguments and puts the uh, resulting type also in the uh, in the corresponding universe. So here's an exercise that you're now able to do. So given a family and an inhabited type like so, then, uh, so given a family like so, you can actually define the term of this, an inhabitant or a term of this type. Uh, you're also asked to define addition and multiplication on the natural numbers using recursion. Now I'd like to say a bit more about uh, universes in Coq. So they are slightly different from uh, Martin Murph type theory. They're what is called uh, Russell style. The ones in uh, Martin Murph type theory are usually presented in Tarski style. That means we have an uh, explicit uh, map, usually called EL, from codes to uh, to types. But so uh, you like the font a little bit more. People are uh, yeah, like so. Even though like this. So here, if we do print universes, this actually tells us that um, we have two universes, prop 
and set. Set is what we just called type zero. Uh, now, if we ask Cock to check that type is in type, then it happily says, yeah, this works. And this is what is called the Girard paradox. And this would actually be inconsistent if we actually have type in type. Fortunately, this is not what's really happening. Uh, there's an annotation here that Cock uh, automatically fills in for us. And this is just syntactic sugar for that. Um, we can make that explicit. And this is what we do a lot in the, in the hot library. Um, so we first uh, define two new names for universes, I and J. And then if we say print universes again, then we have prop and set that we had before, and now we also have I and J. And then we can check that type at universe I is type at uh, is a term of type at, at universe J. And uh, what COG does, it, so currently it doesn't know anything about I and J. So it just checks that it's actually possible to add the constraint that I is less than J um, to the constraints it already has. And that's fine because they're, uh, the only constraint is the prop is less than type zero. Uh, so this is, can be consistently added. So there are no cycles in, the, uh, uh, in this graph. Uh, so Cock is happy at this point, and it doesn't need to need to know more about I and J. Um, so here's something that's uh, not allowed. So uh, type I is not uh, an element of type I. This would actually be the uh, um, the Girard paradox. Um, but this is, for example, so we can say that. Uh, type J is an element of type I. And we can also- Asking in the chat if you can make thing. the main window, uh, close the other panes, just do a control X1, I guess. Yep. So what we did before is we didn't give any constraints like so, but we can actually do this explicitly. So we can uh, add universes, which we call large and huge. And then we add a constraint that huge is actually bigger than large. So we can also give annotations here. So if we have a universe level, then we can make a universe level that's one larger. Uh, we can also just, uh, check that uh, u large is less, uh, we can request Koch to check that um, u large is, uh, fits into u huge. And uh, that's fine because this actually is consistent with what we have here. So that's fine. Uh, you can also do set pending universes and then you actually get more information, thanks. Um, and again, we use this fail command to see that if we do this check here, then it actually fails. So this closes the, uh, the section on universes. Any questions about this introduction to Cock, apart from that uh, the type check is not working? For those failed definitions of universe typings, why is there a define colon equals? In this one? Yes, what does that syntax mean? Uh, we just check that uh, this one doesn't fail. So we just define a new term called test two, which is defined to be this one. And then it needs to check that. So the level of this one, uh, so we quantify over type J. So this one needs to be at least uh, J plus one. So what it checks is that I is uh, bigger than uh, J plus one. And that's fine because we don't know anything about I and J. Oh, right, right. Yep, thanks for the question. Anything else? Then let's uh, let's continue. Um, 
So I just want to give you a, a very quick overview of what the uh, what the hot library looks like. Uh, so what you re you really should be doing is is just playing with it and and uh, clicking around. Uh, uh, I just want to show off how big it actually is. So, and what it shows here is, uh, it just shows the uh, the files, and then if you click on them, you actually get to see the file here. And what this is doing is it calls what is called Proviola. So if you mouse over it, then if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can actually see, uh, I would point at my mouse, but I cannot do that because if I move my mouse, you, will, you won't see it anymore. Um, but if you look at the uh, the middle of the screen, you can actually see that um, the side well is now defined. So this is replaying the crop script in the Proviola tool. So each node in this graph actually presents uh, represents a file. So this gives you some idea of the amount of files that are involved and how big the library actually is. And I think I only, yeah, the only thing I did was to show you a small picture. There's even a, a, a hyperlib dependency graph of the entire library. Now, if you look at the uh, at the basics directory, uh, then this actually includes basically our version of the uh, of the standard library. It also has the uh, a version of the Cox prelude. Which is called Overture, just to call it something something else, and all the notations are defined here. So if you're looking for something, it's usually in in Basics and in particular in Overture. There's a lot of things defined. Um, what's really good to do if you want to know more about the library is to look at this uh, file here, where we actually explain a lot of things about um, how we developed the. Uh, uh, how we're working with the, with the library. So there are all kinds of uh, coding styles. Uh, we use two, two pair of eyes. So each time someone sends a pull request, there are two people looking at it. There are special ways of using records and structures. There's something about actions. I'll say more about this, about higher inductive types, universe polymorphism. So there's a lot of information here. So I really encourage you to have a look at this. Uh, but I'll also go over many of these points now uh, fairly quickly. Um, Majo, I'm out of time. I think I can wrap up in five to 10 minutes, uh, Pai? Yeah, I think it's better if you wrap up now in five, 10 minutes. I mean, yep. finish, finish this part. Yeah. Yep. So the design principles are the, the core library should be accessible. So we try to limit the number of, uh, the amount of Unicode, canonical structures, type classes, and so on in the basics directory. In other parts of the library, we really go crazy using all kinds of uh, complicated parts of uh, or trans parts of the uh, of the Cock type theory and things like uh, type classes, uh, record types. Um, the, uh, there's a file that actually helps us to uh, navigate the hotbook. So if you're reading the hotbook or if you're just looking for a challenge, uh, then you can see here, this is automatically generated from all the references in the, uh, in the hotbook from the LaTeX sources. And this is a script written by Andre. Um, so if we now look at uh, Lemma 2.2.1 from the book, we can click here and actually see that, well, it's proved in this file, so we can go back and forth. Now you can also see that uh, I think most of the chapters are completely done, but there's some parts that are not done. So if you're looking for a challenge, it's a good place to look for it. Um, something that hasn't been done, but uh, which would be nice, uh, Eckbert has his new uh, book coming out, and I don't know whether he has connected 
everything with the uh, hot book already. He has a, his own conversation in, uh, in ACTA, but it would also be nice to put the hot library in this way. Uh, let me see. I want to give you very quickly some motivation for uh, why why we're actually building the uh, building this new foundation of mathematics. So I'm yeah I'm running late, but I want to show it in any case. Uh, so what we're doing is building a new foundation for mathematics. But it's more practical than the old foundation, the old set theoretical foundation. So it's modern a modern categorical structural uh, um, structural presentation of uh, mathematics. It's even higher categorical. It's uh, geared towards formalization of mathematics, and it has the computational interpretation, which of course coming from type theory we all know is important. It's much closer to mathematical practice, uh, practice and it has an inherent treatment of equivalences. Um, HOT also helps, helps us to design new proof assistants, and we'll see more about this uh, later on uh, in Anders' talk, uh, for example, um, when we're looking at the cubicle agda. Um, the other thing is, uh, so uh, Koch only has an operational semantics, but no clear denotational semantics. And HOT really helps us to, do, uh, to make a better denotational semantics. Um, so far, the hot library is mostly a way for us to experiment with hot and to do things like uh, synthetic homotopy theory um, and add quotients to, uh, to that theory and see what can actually be done. Um, in the future, we, we uh, probably want to integrate this more deeply into, uh, into the Cox system, just like has been done with Cubicle like that, uh, for example, once we really understand how to do this. Uh, so some, some challenges. So pre-hot we had sets as types. So we could pretend that sets, uh, sets were types, but then we had no quotients. So we needed to uh, go towards the, uh, the setoid help. Uh, a setoid is a, uh, a, set, a setoid is a way of uh, pretending uh, that we have quotients. So we carry out uh, uh, equivalence relation explicitly and then we need to use uh, set or rewrite and carry around propers everywhere. Uh, the other thing is we don't have unique choice, which is also inconvenient and doesn't really fit the uh, mathematical practice. Um, on the other hand, if we uh, think about types of sets, then we have something that's not fully abstract. So we can make a model, or there is actually a formalized model of type theory in set theory, but this is not fully abstract. So the universe actually should be a groupoid. So um, we certainly want to go to the groupoid model. Actually, we want to go further. Uh, I, I won't explain what the groupoid model is here, but people that know this uh, will know what I will uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, so in the formalization of discrete mathematics, for example, the four color theorem or the five Thompson uh, theorem. The computational interpretation was crucial to actually get the whole uh, proof to go through. Um, and one question is, can we actually extend this to non-discrete types, uh, like computation with quotients or computation with the circle? Uh, this is something that can now be done in cubicle acta, for example. And uh, this is where I wanted to get. Let me quickly go back to the, um, to the slides. Uh, I think it's good for me to wrap up and uh, continue here uh, after the break. I have a bit more. Uh, no, let, let me go on for five more minutes uh, just to outline uh, outline this to you, and then you can actually make the uh, make the exercises. Uh, there's a question about fully abstract. Um, fully abstract here means that um, there are things in the uh, there, there are more things 
in type theory, then we can, there, there are more things identified. Uh, there's also a remark about Beavers and Butthead standing, uh, standing at the Grand Canyon. Uh, that, that's something uh, Andre needs to explain, uh, explain later on. Um, so the fully abstract means that there are things in the type theory. Uh, so, so there are too much things identified in set theory. Um, so the, uh, the semantics of set theory is not fine enough to faithfully model what can be proved in type theory. Um, so what I'm showing you here, and this is something you can actually read for yourself. These are all the notations you actually need to do the, uh, um, to do the, uh, there's something question here. Yes, thank you. Um, what I'm uh, showing you here is all the notations you actually need to do the exercises for day one. I think that this is something you can uh, read for yourself. And then there's some pointers here for, there's a file called path group points. which carefully defines all the notations and naming conventions for the lemmas. And then does most of the proofs you've seen, uh, you've seen here in the beginning. Uh, so qu quite a few of the exercises you've seen on Andre's slides yesterday, uh, they can be proved very easily. And most of the proofs, as you can see, uh, they just, you assume that each path you're inducting over is the uh, the identity path, and then things just roll out directly. So the proofs are really really easy in type theory. So that's very convenient. Um, and basically everything is here. Uh, I think I don't need to stop for this discussion. Um, then also the uh, the one the one dimensional group board structure can also be found in the same file here. So this is most of the, uh, uh, quite a few of the questions you saw yesterday, they're in this file. Uh, now, I just want to show off one thing. There's the Ekman-Hilton argument, which says that the composition operation on the second loop space is commuted. And that's, those, what is it, eight lines here in the definition, and of course a few lemmas before that. And that's something that takes uh, one and a half page in the book. So this really shows you that uh, the proof the uh, proof term in Coq is a lot simpler than uh, what you actually write down here. So you really get a lot of help from uh, from the proof system, and this is a this is a serious theorem. It's actually something that has a name. It even has two names. So there were two mathematicians who were necessary to prove um, prove this theorem, and we can now write it in eight lines in uh, in Coq very concisely. So that's why I want to stop. Is there any uh, last question before we get to the exercises? Oh, what's the difference between the um, uh, the Coq Hot Library and the Unimath Library? Um, so the um, Coq Hot Library is built on uh, was inspired by Fovotsky's uh, Foundations Library, and the Foundations Library developed further into the Unimath Library. Um, Unimath Library doesn't have higher inductive types. So it doesn't, uh, it's not very uh, suited to do synthetic homotopy theory, at least not the parts where we use uh, the, uh, the, the higher inductive types a lot. Um, the other part is that the, um, uh, th there's a lot of impressive work that's in the Unimath library. There's, there's quite a bit of uh, overlap, 
um, the uh, the Cockhot library is also much more careful with uh, things like impredicativity and universe polymorphism. Um, we also pay quite a high price for that, um, but it also really helped to develop the universe polymorphism in Cock. Uh, so that's now much better understood because much of ordinary mathematics um, doesn't really use, uh, I think in the standard library, um, we get up to three universes at most, um, whereas in the uh, in the hot library, we really get higher and uh, do much more complicated things with universes. So it's a really also a stress test. If you, if you actually start to do this seriously, it's a stress test for a universe polymorphism and for the treatment of universes. And I think it really helped to, uh, to develop that. And it's still helping to, uh, to develop that even, even further. Can I also add that uh, the yep. two libraries have uh, different goals in mind? So as far as I understand, the Unimath library actually wants to formalize a lot of mathematics, like undergraduate mathematics and so on, as a foundation. But the HOT library, that's not necessarily the goal. Uh, the goal there is to experiment with things that we're doing in HOT. Um, so like we have different goals in mind. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's certainly true. Yes, uh, thanks, Pierre-Marie. So Unimouth uses type and type. So Unimouth is actually inconsistent at the moment, although they, they, they have had a plan for a long time to remove that and actually use the um, new universe polymorphism that we have in, uh, have in COC, but they haven't actually done so yet. Um, so, it, so currently it's still uh, inconsistent, uh, although they, they're not using this inconsistency. What are the trade-offs between uh, Koch and Akka in terms of developing the hot library? So that's a very good question. There are two ways, and, and to some extent, I'll, I'll tell you just to wait until um, the presentation by Anders Mordberg. Um, cubicle Akka is, is really very exciting because it's really a, a different, uh, different type theory. Um, in general, if you look at um, vanilla Akka and, and Koch, then in uh, Koch, you get a lot more support using uh, doing things like, and I'll, I'll say a bit more about this. See, I think I had it. Uh, yes. So, for example, if we look at the hot simple tactic, which is at the bottom here, then we have a very clever tactic that uh, helps us to prove all kinds of things automatically about paths. Uh, that's something that's uh, much harder to do uh, in Agda, although Agda now has. Um, has tactics, they're not so well developed. On the other hand, ACTA is very strong at dependent pattern matching. Uh, for a long time, it was too strong because uh, that they had dependent pattern matching, which directly gave you the K action, which is inconsistent with um, univalence. Um, but they've removed that, and that's a very powerful automation. Um, Mature, of course, now has implemented equations, and equations does depend on pattern matching. And also gives you, um, uh, yeah, now, now gives you that power. Equations hasn't been used a lot for the hot library yet. And I think that would be very exciting to do that more because what we will see later is that some of the proof terms are not actually very readable. Uh, let me see if there's more in the. Uh, yes, thanks, Andre. The hot library will actually motivate it much quite a lot to extend universe polymorphism uh, for one, because we were complaining so much. Um, yes, the, the original goal of HOT was to try and understand the foundations library and to a large extent also to um, re-engineer it for more um, modern methods. So there's a lot of the, um, Organization learned, learned also a lot from the uh, math comp uh, library uh, to some extent from the math classes library. So we're using type classes a lot. Um, so to, to some extent was to make the uh, foundations mo uh, library uh, much more modern and uh, use more automation. Um, And then, yeah, a big difference was that um, uh, the hot library supports higher inductive types, which are not available in, uh, 
in Unimas. Uh, Egbert has a remark about width abstraction in ACTA, which certainly is, uh, is true. And uh, Ali says that, um, yeah, so the uh, in, in COC one uses, uh, uses tactics to construct terms and in ACTA one builds them themselves. And to some extent, ACTA is supporting more and more automation tactics and COC is supporting, um, yeah, is developing the equations plugin. Um, so we're, we're trying to learn from each other. 